The discounted cash flow valuation model is probably one of the most common methods used by investors to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock. In this video, I'm going to take you through my simple calculator here, which will allow you to do your own DCF valuation of a company in a very simple way. Along with this, I'm going to point out some of the limitations of the discounted cash flow valuation model, as well as times when it is not suitable to use whatsoever. So first off, let's start going through my calculator here. And as well, this is going to be completely free to download. There will be a link down in the description section where you can get access to your own copy. All I will ask you is when you do get access to this Google Sheet, what you will need to do is go file and make a copy to make your own editable version of this calculator. So there is an instructions tab here to help you out and to tell you where you can find some of the data that is used in this calculator as well. Um, so you can refer to that if you are stuck. And as well, I'm gonna put in the link to this video after it is recorded so you can go back over this video if you prefer that kind of method for instructions. So what are the requirements on your side? So anything you see highlighted in blue here in this table, that is a required input by you. This calculator is currently set up to do a DCF valuation of Coca-Cola. So I have the stock ticker in here for Coca-Cola, which is KO, and you are going to have to, to the best of your abilities, to best estimate all of these different required inputs in this table in order to get the best estimate possible of the intrinsic value of the Coca-Cola share price, which you can see over here on the table on the right-hand side. So as you can see from the inputs that I have already entered into the calculator, it's pumping out an intrinsic value share price for Coca-Cola of $65.57. That is compared to the current share price, which is a bit lower of $64.11. So it is currently saying that Coca-Cola is overvalued by 2.28% according to the inputs and parameters that I have set out here. So let's have a quick look through the inputs and how the calculator actually works. So firstly, you're gonna to need to get the earnings before interest depreciation and amortization for the trailing 12 months or its EBITDA. This you can easily get from the likes of Yahoo Finance. So if I search for the Coca-Cola company financial data on Yahoo Finance, I will see here in the income statement section, I will see their trailing 12 months figures here and I can scroll down and find my EBITDA of 13.828 billion. Similarly, the next required input you can also take from Yahoo Finance, and that is the free cash flow for the past trading 12 months, which is coming out to 9.6 billion. Your next required input here is gonna be the free cash flow growth rate. And I have a separate tab here where I work out what this rate is. So if you come over here to the free cash flow growth rate tab, what I've done here is taken the free cash flow for Coca-Cola for the last 10 years and worked out the growth rate in each year and then just got the average over the last 10 years. And that's what I'm gonna use for my calculation. We'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but this is where some of the limitations of the DCF valuation model start to arise. Because I have decided to calculate this free cash flow growth rate over the past 10 years of company activity. Somebody might have decided to do it based on the last, say, 30 years. Some people may have completely disregarded the company's historic cash flow growth rate and come up with their own estimation of what the free cash flow growth rate is to be in the future. And that will mean that each of us will come up with a completely different intrinsic value of the Coca-Cola share price. The free cash flow growth rate feeds into the calculation here. So we are gonna build out what we think the growth is in the free cash flow over the next 10 years. And then we are going to discount that back to current day terms by using the discounted rate, which is our WAC in this case, which is the weighted average cost of capital. Now, there are plenty of resources online where you can find companies that routinely calculate the weighted average cost of capital for most public companies. But personally, I like to work it out myself and I have a completely separate calculator that will allow you to do it as well if you want to. Um, so it involves things like working out the company's cost of equity, the company's cost of debt, and then working out the overall weighted average cost of its finance. I also have a video tutorial on how to use this calculator, which I will link here and also link down in the description section if you want to access this as well. So feel free to use this calculator as well. So I use my weighted average cost of capital calculator to work out the cost of capital for Coca-Cola and it came out to 7.06% and that is what I'm using here for my calculation. 
and that will then feed in here to the calculation of the discounted value of the future free cash flows. This is a very important part of the calculation due to the time value of money. In order to work out the value of receiving 10 billion in cash next year, you're going to have to discount it back to today's terms. So that is what we were doing here by discounting all of these future free cash flows by the weighted average cost of capital. The next required input that you're going to need here for the calculator is to help you work out the terminal value. So we're only really forecasting the free cash flows for the next 10 years, but obviously the company is gonna keep on receiving cash flow well into the future. So what we'll need to do is actually work out the terminal value in terms of what the valuation is of all the cash flows well into the future. So one way of doing that is working out the terminal value by using an EBITDA multiple. So what we have done here in this calculator is we have taken the current EBITDA which we have already put into our calculator up here as 13.828 billion and we've also worked out an EBITDA growth rate of 3.15%. There is a separate EBITDA growth rate tab that worked out what the average growth rate was over the past um, five years. So that came out to 3.15%. And that is what we're using here to work out how much our EBITDA should grow over the next 10 years. Then to work out the terminal value, we are taking that EBITDA in year 10 and we're multiplying it by the EBITDA multiple, which is 21.4. And we are also discounting that back to today's value terms by using the weighted average cost of capital again as our discount rate. Now the EBITDA multiple that you actually choose to use here is subjective again. What I have used here for this calculation is the company's current enterprise value to EBITDA ratio, which is 21.4, which you can get on the likes of Yahoo Finance. But you could also put in, say, an industry average. You could also use a competitor's EV to EBITDA ratio or some other type of multiple that you feel is appropriate. So once we have the terminal value here worked out as well, we add that to the present value of our cash flows from years one to 10, which are here. So we add the two of those together and that gives us our enterprise value, which is coming out to 287.5 billion. Now that's great that we have our enterprise value, but now we need to try and work out what the share price is based on this enterprise value. So in order to go from enterprise value back to equity value, we need to take out the company's net debt. Your net debt for a company is basically its total debt less any cash that it has on the balance sheet. So this is another one of the required inputs here on our table. Um, you can also get this from Yahoo Finance. So that works out our equity value and based on our equity value, we can work out our intrinsic value share price for Coca-Cola. So it's gonna take our, our equity value and divide it by the number of outstanding shares and that gives us our intrinsic value per share. And then we have a bit of a metric to show you whether based on your calculation, the company is showing as being over or undervalued. So based on my calculation here, Coca-Cola is showing up slightly overvalued at 2.28%. So that is a bit of a whistle stop tour of my calculator. But before I move on and finish the video, I just wanna talk about some of the limitations of using the whole DCF model in the first place. So there is a lot of assumptions that go into this calculation. So two people that do the same calculation could end up with completely different answers based on the assumptions that they make. In that regard, you really need to start testing out your assumptions so you don't fall into some sort of false sense of security. So what you could do here is just mess around with some of the key assumptions that you ended up making. So I could increase my discount right here by 1% and see how that affects the overall calculation. So I've increased it here to 8.06%. And now it is coming up with the company being undervalued at 5.4%. So it has quite a big impact when you change some of your assumptions that you have made in your required inputs here. For that reason as well, it might be useful to do a couple of different valuation techniques to see if they are all pointing towards the same answer of whether the company is over or undervalued. Like you could use other techniques such as Gordon's growth model. You could look at price to earnings ratios, price to book ratios, enterprise value to EBITDA ratios, and do a bit of more analysis and compare them to competitors to get a lot more comfort around your calculations. And another limitation of the DCF valuation model is that it is not always appropriate to use for all types of companies. So a couple of different types of companies where you really shouldn't be using this model is for early stage or high growth companies that just are not generating positive cash flows yet, they don't have any profits yet, 
for that reason you wouldn't really be using it for some i'll say the more startup kind of tech companies that you're seeing going public lately as well as that you should have a look at the company's previous cash flow history if it's completely unstable and inconsistent the dcf valuation model might not be appropriate at all because the dcf assumes a stable and predictable cash flow stream if you are looking at a company with completely unpredictable cash flows i'm sure the share price as well is pretty much unpredictable some other companies that are maybe unsuitable as well are distressed companies and companies in cyclical industries that see significant fluctuations in cash flows due to economic cycles. So they are just a couple of things to be careful with when using this calculator. I hope you find it useful. I hope you find it useful and if you have any suggestions on how I could possibly improve it or make it better, please let me know down in the comment section. I would love to get some feedback. Um, Thanks very much for watching the video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please make sure and drop a like on it as well. And also please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this in the future.